Hello once again. Good Monday, Cougar Nation. We welcome you back inside the Coordinator's Corner, brought to you by JCW's The Burger Boys. BYU now 3-1 and one on the season after a 30-3 home win over McNeese on Saturday. Back-to-back -back wins for the Cougars for the first time since... BYU won the final five games of the 2016 season and the first game of last season. And to break it down with us today, offensive coordinator Jeff Grimes and special teams coordinator Ed Lamb. Coach Grimes with us for the first 30 minutes and Coach Lamb coming up in the final half hour. Good to have you along live on BYU TV, BYU Radio, Sirius XM 143, and now on 107.9 FM in Northern Utah, plus BYU Football Facebook Live and ESPN 960. We are also live online and on multiple apps and, of course, available on demand. We invite you to take part in today's show on Twitter with questions for the coaches using hashtag CCBYU or via comments on the BYU Football Facebook Live page. And to kick off today's show, in his first season as BYU's offensive coordinator, but his second stint on the sidelines in Provo, Coach Jeff Grimes. Coach Grimes, congrats on the weekend win and happy 50th birthday. You had to bring that up. Well, it was out there. It yeah, was out my, there on social day, media. My day was going well. I kind of, I <laughs> hope to forget about that. But um, as I said a couple of times yesterday and already today, it's better than the alternative. And you've got people that love you all over the yeah. place here, and that's a good thing, And uh, including coaches who were happy to share in your joy yesterday. Yeah, we had a lot of fun. Good stuff. Yeah. Uh, things you were most pleased about from Saturday's win? Um, it was a win, <laughs> number one. <laughs> Anytime you can get a victory, I think you got to celebrate that and enjoy that. Uh, um, not our best performance on offense, but as I reminded our team in the locker room afterwards, every Saturday there are a lot of college football games, and 50% of those teams lose the games. And so I think anytime you win, you have to celebrate that and to some extent um, feel like you've moved ahead. Um, and so I, I was pleased that um, that we got the victory, but really um, didn't feel great about how we played the game, to be honest. Uh, just too many mistakes. Sometimes teams expected to win big don't. And the Virginia Tech at Old Dominion, for example, on Saturday. Yeah, I, I, I've been on both sides of that. I've been on the side um, of being at a smaller team that was – a smaller school that was able to beat a bigger team or play them really well, and then I've been at that bigger team, that 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 team that was perceived to be um, a better program and lost or almost lost in a very close game because you didn't take the other team seriously. And so, um, I I don't I don't think that was necessarily our problem on Saturday, and we're again certainly grateful to have walked away with a victory. So piggybacking off your preceding comment, uh, what are some things that you think need sharpening up before Saturday? Well, we just had the opportunity to make some plays, and we didn't. Plays that we had practiced countless times throughout the week. Um, uh, the first play of the game, you know, once again, we've got someone um, wide open for a deep ball, and we're not able to uh, to complete it. Um, a couple of other times, we had guys open and either didn't have the protection or or didn't didn't make the throw, didn't make the right read, um, the reverse, um, which was something that we had we practiced for some time, and, and we throw a bad pitch and put the ball on the ground. Um, we have another fumble during the game in, in traffic and, and just uh, some sloppy play that I don't think is indicative of who we are as an offense, um, but it was on Saturday. In the two home games, uh, Tanner Mangum has made a couple of throws over the top, uh, very similar-looking plays, a couple of posts, I think, uh, and, and in both instances, the ball's where it needs to be and the ball doesn't get hauled in. Um, and and uh, whether it's it's his efficiency numbers or BYU's chunk play numbers, they are all affected by those little things right there, but he's making the throws. They've, they've been good throws in both the Cal game and the McNeese game. More often than not, that's certainly been the case. And there have been other times where, where the throw wasn't ideal. And that, and that one could have been probably a little bit better thrown. It was um, the one Saturday? Bit, yeah, it was a little, a little bit far. short of the mark. He, it, Gunner had to slow down and wait on it just a bit. But it, it was a ball that certainly could have been caught. Um, but we've, just, we've had a number of opportunities in these first four games for big plays in the passing game. Some that have even gone probably unseen. Um, at times, maybe there was a guy open and uh, the protection wasn't right, so the ball never got thrown or it didn't get thrown um, in the place that we would have liked for it to be thrown. So there's plenty of blame to go around, but there's no question we've got to we've got to get better at throwing the football and, and hopefully uh, better at completing some deep balls. But it's all part of the overall picture because I know that uh, when it comes to, to numerical or statistical benchmarks, 
passing yards is not going to be something you guys look to. But it is part of the overall approach that includes chunk plays and other things and efficiency, and, and it all comes together. And you just hope that more of those big plays do come together at some point. Yeah, it, and it's not it's not due to a, a lack of effort or preparation. We worked really, really hard on those particular plays last week. We worked really hard on the passing game in general last week, more so than we had in previous weeks, honestly. Um, so to not be able to come away with more to show for it than that is is frustrating. And yes, if we if we're able to have an efficient day and move the football and score points, then ultimately that's our job on offense. But I just know that down the road we're going to have some games where we're going to have to throw the ball more efficiently in order to get the points needed to win. Relative to scoring points, I'll just take a, a, a time frame or a reference frame from last year and bring it forward. In last year's first four games, BYU played one FCS and three P5s, and they were averaging fewer than 10 points per game in those four games. You come forth this year, and in the first four, it's an FCS and three P5s, and you're at 25 points a game. Certainly, you could always take more points per game but the bottom line is there's been a, a noticeable improvement and that's why you're three and one well I think I think that's something to to be um, I don't know if proud is the right word um, content is certainly not the yeah. right word um, but to some extent pleased with the fact that we have scored enough points to win three games and and um, if we had scored just another time or two in the other game we could be sitting here four and0 right now. Um, but I'm, I, I look more when I watch the tape to see if we played as well as we could have. And you're never going to play a perfect game because when you have 11 guys on the field at once and there are 11 guys on the other team who are trying not to allow you to do what it is that you intend to do, it's never going to be perfect. But what I look to is, are we doing the things that we can control consistently? Are we lining up properly? Are we blocking the right people? Are we protecting? Are we throwing the football in time? And are we catching the ball when given the opportunity? Same thing in the run game. Are we, are we, are we shifting properly? Are we snapping the ball on time? Is the running back making the right reads? Are we blocking the right people with the right landmarks? And when you do that, sometimes the other team just makes a play. And, I, and I'm okay with that. Sometimes you just get beat. Um, but when we defeat ourselves, I'm not happy with that. And we did too much of that on Saturday. One of the things you like to think you're able to control is ball security. Uh, you have one turnover in your three wins, one total turnover in your three wins, and two giveaways in the one loss. BYU's been even or plus in the margin in all four games this season. Last year, it was 2.08 giveaways per game. This year, it's 0 0.75 giveaways per game. Last year... The turnovers were happening on 18% of drives. This year, it's under 5%. Last year, BYU was 118th in the margin, and this year, you're tied for 12th. You can start at turnover margin, and that can occupy a lot of, of, of what ends up in the win-loss uh, tally. No question. No question that's the case. And, and uh, Saturday, it was the case again, and uh, we won the turnover margin, but we put the ball on the ground twice, and I wasn't happy about that at all. And... Um, you know, something that we talk about every day in practice, after practice, if we put the ball on the ground at any point during practice, then then we have a little reminder after practice for the offense with that. But um, the only acceptable number in terms of turnovers, especially fumbles, is zero. Occasionally, if you're willing to make some tough throws, the defense will make a play on the ball and tip one and pick one off. And not that any are acceptable, but that's a little bit different than us just dropping the football on a on a, on a run play. You've had zero turnovers in two games so far this season. You're 2-0, and and in the Sitaka era, Kalani's 7-1 and when they, with a zero turnover game. All right, heading into break on the coordinator's corner. When we come back, more from offensive coordinator Jeff Grimes and your questions from social media using hashtag CCBYU on Twitter. Back with more right after this. We're changing how you receive health care to give you more choices to be more personal, like seeing a doctor from your hotel room rather than a patient room, or seeing your primary care physician when you normally couldn't. It's putting you first and also putting you more in control. It's care how, where, and when you want it. Intermountain Healthcare. Visit healingforlife.com. Bruh, I got no chill. BYU TV Sports Countdown to Kickoff. BYU and Washington. Saturday, 7.30 Eastern, 5.30 Mountain. 
on BYU TV. Blue runs deep on BYU TV. Don't miss the BYU Gonzaga women's soccer game Thursday at 9 Eastern, 7 Mountain. Watch all of your favorite BYU teams on BYU TV, your home for Cougar Sports. This September, see the good in the world with exciting shows on BYU TV. Get ready to laugh because Studio C is on every Monday at 7 Mountain with all your favorite characters and hilarious antics. Come along with Todd Hansen as he discovers all new stories on all new episodes of The Story Trek, Tuesdays at 8 Mountain. It's a new season of Relative Race with more puzzles, relatives, and surprises along the way. Sundays at 7 Mountain. There's something for everyone here on BYU TV. Some say if you're looking for the soul of America, you'll find it right here in Memphis, Tennessee. But if Memphis is the soul of America, then what's the soul of Memphis? From the banks of the Mississippi to the neon lights of Beale Street, that soul's hiding somewhere, and I've got to put it all in one painting. Join me as we paint the town of Memphis, Tennessee. Don't miss Painting the Town tomorrow at 8.30 Mountain on BYU TV. Dinner after the game at JCW's includes something for everybody, from burgers to wings, shakes to salads. JCW's quality and a lot of it in Lehigh, American Fork, Provo, South Jordan, and coming soon to Harriman. BYU now 3-1 and one, and number 20 now in the AP Top 25 poll, just outside the coaches' Top 25 at 26 after a weekend win over McNeese at Lavelle Edwards Stadium. BYU heading for a trip to Seattle and meeting with nationally ranked Washington this Saturday. One of the interesting things to come out of Saturday's win was uh, who did the scoring. And not only did uh, Talon Shumway and Lopini Katoa pick up their first touchdowns of their BYU careers, but when you throw in Skylar Southam's three field goals and three PATs, all of Saturday's points were scored by players who were not part of BYU's score sheet at all last season. So you're getting contributions from either younger guys or guys who have taken a while to emerge on the roster. Yeah, I think that's indicative to some extent of where we are still as an offense, still growing and evolving and competing for reps and play in time. And I think <clears throat> um, there are some guys that – that can still score some points that haven't done so yet. I was really happy for Peeney. Um, had a really good day, ran the ball well, and and um, I felt like it was his time. So he, he's a kid, great kid, works incredibly hard, shows up every day, and so I was really happy for him. He he deserved to have a day like that. A 10-carry game for Lupini Katoa, 64 yards of the, on the day in those two scores. So we talked about uh, in the first four games, the scoring number up from last year to this. We talked about the turnover margin number, uh, much improved from last year to this. Our red zone touchdown number is up a good 20% right now uh, over last season, uh, 44 0.7% red zone touchdown percentage last year, one of the lowest numbers in the country. And this year, uh, 64.3, and it's a 20% improvement. There were a couple of red zone misses uh, versus McNeese, uh, and, and officially they're going to count a red zone miss on that last possession of the game where you're not trying to score. So officially they might be 5 for 6, but you were 5 for 5 in the red zone uh, with three touchdowns, a couple of field goals. General efficiency uh, numbers, how do you look at them right now in the red zone? Um like a lot of areas of our offense, um, at times at times good and certainly improved, but not where it needs to be yet. Um, when we've when we've done well in the red zone, we've been able to uh, be balanced, and I think that's a key to our offense. When when we can run the football and throw the football in any given situation, I think that's when we're at our best. And um, we struggled a couple of times the other day in, in the passing game, and I think that held us back a little bit. There was a drop on the goal line that could have been a touchdown pass for you guys easily in, in, in the red zone. Yep. And, uh, and and that's, that's a play you expect the, uh, the guys to make, Rod. Right? Absolutely. Just another example of a play that was that was there. The design was was right. They played what we thought they would, and, and we just didn't make the play. Uh, BYU has no first possession scores yet in a game, has scored first one time in the four games. How much do you focus on and do you focus on either first possessions or first scores, knowing how, how important they have been to BYU historically? 
we try as hard as we can to get off to a great start. Sometimes it doesn't <laughs> turn out the way that we planned for it to. I thought we might be up 7 nothing after the first play. I really felt like that play would be open and we'd have an opportunity to, to at least hit a big gain. Um, but it doesn't always work out that way. And, and the thing that we've tried to, to um, – encourage our players to recognize is that we want to try to score on every possession but once that possession is over with you can't dwell on it you got to move on to the next one and and um, I think we were a little bit tight a little anxious maybe um, in the first quarter and um, a little frustrated that we that we weren't performing better and once we kind of loosened up and settled in we did better. I'll say 24 points second quarter, and it's the uh, highest scoring single quarter of the Satake era. And as we talked about off the air a little bit, and as I talked quite a bit about on the air Saturday, it was defensive plays and special teams plays setting up the offense with shorter fields and resulting in touchdowns. And that's where it all kind of came together for you in the second quarter. Yeah, I like it when when our defense (laughs) does that and and we get a nice return. That certainly uh, makes you feel good when you set up camp on their side of the 50. Mm Mm-hmm. Uh, but I think that's when our team's at our best right now, when we're functioning well together, all three fa- phases uh, working together. Defense makes a play, and then we capitalize with a touchdown. Um, and then maybe we get the ball, and we drive it and push the ball down the field. And even if we don't score, or maybe we kick a field goal, we allow our defense to rest, and we give them the opportunity to recover and flip the field, and then they come out and are fresh and get a stop. And I just think we're the type of team that's going to that's gonna play at, at our best when all three phases are working together. And as a result, another day with a positive average starting field position. BYU is plus seven yards in that tally. And in the Satake era, BYU is 11-3 and three when they are plus five or better in average starting field position. It's a big component. Uh, Squally Canada seems like he kind of... Uh, tends to go in and come out with either a retweak or a bang every week. How's he doing right now health-wise, and can he kind of continue this way throughout the season? Yeah, he just he tweaked his ankle again a little bit, and um, it's one of those things that I think he'll come back and be fine with. He's a guy that's shown that he can play with pain, which um, in the game of football, if you can't do that, you're not going to last very long. Um, but he's shown that he can do that and function at a pretty high level, so I, I'm certain he'll be fine. No long-range concerns for him that way? No. Okay, uh, to social media now from uh, at It's Chappie. He says, it seems like the big play is what loosens up the offense and leads to scores. Do you plan or try to create big plays or chunk plays? And is there a certain number of uh, big plays and the big gainers of either you know, 30, 40 yards get mentioned that you're going for in a particular game? As many as we can. <laughs> <laughs> um, again, we, 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 uh, we plan for a number of them, and I have a certain place on my call sheet that I go to when I'm looking for one of those um, and we had a couple more called the other day that just didn't didn't get thrown um, either again because of protection or read or the defense did a good job covering us um, and it, but at some point as a play caller you just got to say okay <laughs> let's um, let's let's take a different approach if we're not completing those there's a risk and reward um, element to, to every play call and um, I think we certainly got to keep taking our shots and and just believe that that they're going to turn turn our way here soon. And there came a point Saturday where where the game was won, right? <laughs> Did you maybe throttle back a little bit um, as the game wore on? Yeah, that's certainly yeah. been the case in, in all three of our wins. There have been times where we played it a little bit more conservatively at at some point, and um, I don't know if that's the approach everybody would take, but it's worked for it's worked well for us thus far. Before we had to break, uh, you're picking your spots with tempo, and it's worked out pretty well for you guys, hasn't it? Yeah, I think so, and I think that's something that um, something that I learned during my time in the SEC, talking to a lot of defensive coordinators who have said that the teams that always go fast, that's not too difficult. The teams that always go slow, that's not too tough. They've said the teams that change their tempo are the ones that make it the most difficult on them, and so we change our tempo in a number of different ways, and um, hopefully it helps us keep the defense off balance. Been pretty effective. All right, coming up next, more with BYU Offensive Coordinator Jeff Grimes and more of your questions on Twitter using hashtag CCBYU. This is the Coordinator's Corner brought to you by JCW's The Burger Boys. Back with more right after this. When my grandfather started this company in 1947, he couldn't have envisioned what we would ultimately become. We realized that our value to our customers is that we will be there day after day, year after year, doing whatever we need to to find solutions to the challenges that they face. We are committed to be honestly better in all that we do, in every opportunity that we have to serve our customers. 
I'm Dave McCann. Tomorrow on After Further Review, we review McNeese in preview Washington. Best hour, BYU football on television. Blaine Fowler, David Nixon, Brian Logan explain the game tomorrow night here on BYU TV. Blue runs deep on BYU TV. Don't miss the BYU-Gonzaga women's soccer game Thursday at 9 Eastern, 7 Mountain. Watch all of your favorite BYU teams on BYU TV, your home for Cougar sports. Hi there, how are you? My name's Todd. Nice to meet you. I don't know. Can we put you on our TV show for a second? If any lesson can be learned from the story track. I felt misunderstood. I felt like there was no one in the world who was going through that thing. I hope people will understand that they're special. I'm a believer. They're important. I'm a believer. I got what they're saying, my life. So they have a compelling story. They are worth getting to know. Watch the story track tomorrow at 8 Mountain on BYU TV. A foundling hospital. A vow of friendship. A ruthless matron. Do what we say! And a self willed girl with plans of her own. Don't miss the next episode of Heady Feather, Sunday at 6 Mountain on BYU TV. Cougar Nation, you are in the coordinator's corner, brought to you by JCW's The Burger Boys. 20th ranked BYU visiting 11th ranked Washington on Saturday in Seattle. 10th all-time meeting between these two programs. First get together at Husky Stadium since 2008. That was a memorable BYU win. Uh, Jeff, you've coached in that stadium before. Uh, now, we have one of the best views and venues in all of college football, certainly, but the setting in Seattle is pretty special, too. You know what? I've actually been through there, but I've never actually played. When you were at Arizona State, did you not visit there? We never actually played there. Yeah, interesting. How'd you miss that? I don't know. What, was that one of those years where it was in the rotation? Must have been. Wow. Must have been. So you've uh, been through it but never coached in it. Played at home, yep, and driven through there. Beautiful, beautiful place, though, and I've heard they get really loud. So yeah, looking forward to it. Oh, so your first time. All right. Uh, social media questions for Coach Grimes. Um, this is uh, at Elko Cougar. It says, Arizona State had good success running the ball at UW. Uh, do you feel that to BYU can have similar ground success against the Huskies? I certainly hope so. That That's always a part of our approach. Again, we believe in, in trying to be a balanced offense. I think if you can present to a defense the opportunity and the ability to run and throw the football in any given down and distance, in any field zone, then it makes their job more difficult. And uh, we certainly want to start with being able to run the football. Um, how well we'll do that, we'll, we'll find out on Saturday. BYU's run for 150-plus in three of the four games. Those were three wins. And then under 100 in the other game, the Cal game, I think 91. And that was the one setback on the season. Just a number, but interesting. At Timort 5, Coach Grimes, you mentioned a few weeks ago that you have a grading system for players. Who graded out the highest this week and what sort of criteria is involved? And how comfortable are you sharing grading components? And are you, are you okay with patting certain guys on the back publicly? Um I think it starts with team for me. Always, that's what it's about. It's about what we do collectively as a team. Um, but I don't, re I don't mind rewarding players um, and, and letting the public know when they when they've done a good job. Um, as I mentioned earlier, uh, Peeney did a did a nice job running the football. Was efficient. Ran hard. Ran with energy. Um, Aleva Hifo continues to be a guy that makes plays yeah. for us when we need one to be made, even when it's something as small as throwing a ball out in the flat, and then he makes the guy miss and goes for five or six more and puts us in a position where we're now we have a manageable third down rather than a long third down. Um, Austin Hoyt has really improved the last couple of weeks and, and played really hard and consistently um, in this particular game. Really, really proud of, of his progress. A lot of times you get to the point with a guy – um, that age, and you don't necessarily um, see a lot of improvement. They just kind of hang in there and, and play the same way they have played for the last year or two. But he's really improving and, and really hungry to, um, 
to show that that he's a better player than he has been in the past. Talon Shumway came up with a big play again for us and really proud of him because he's such a hard worker and such a great kid. Really proud of the progress that he's made, and he always he always just gives us a, a great effort, not only um, running routes and being ready to catch a ball, but in, in the blocking area when we run the football as well. And so um, there are a number of other guys that, that graded out um, – favorably, but those are the ones that jump out. Back to the O-line for a moment. You mentioned Austin on the other side of the line. Uh, Keanu Seliaponga is into his uh, second game as a collegiate starting offensive lineman. How's he coming along? Still growing and making progress every day, but you know, for a guy that's as young and inexperienced as he is, every day's game day. <laughs> I mean, it's every single day there is there's coaching going on with him on every single play, and and that's a good thing, but he is um, so eager to do what we're asking him to do and, and is given great effort and just a great young man. So I, I think he's just going to continue to get better and better. Do you know of a Talon Shumway's basketball background? Because he showed some good hops on that touchdown catch. I did not, but yeah, he was a superstar at Lone Peak High School here with a national championship high school team and uh, was getting a lot of looks in basketball before he went football only, and he, he can get up. I'm glad he chose football. <laughs> <laughs> it was a nice play he made in the back corner, wasn't it? It really was. And and again, he's a guy that that I just feel like if we um, if we throw the football up to him, he's normally going to find a way to come down with it. Okay, from at Brock Blake, more questions on the social media for Coach Jeff Grimes. When thinking about the offense, he says, where do you feel the most urgency is for improvement right now? Passing game, clearly, and it's and it's not any one position. It's a collective effort. Um, we're not protecting cleanly enough. Uh, the quarterback at times um, needs to work his way through his progression sooner and get the ball to the right read quicker. Um, at times, we're not running the route quite as sharp as we should be and then and then um, not always catching it uh, like we need to as well either. And so it truly is a collective effort and everyone plays a role in, in throwing and, and catching the football. And we just need to get better there. We need to become more efficient. As I mentioned, you're not you're not looking for raw numbers in the passing game, but all of those components you just mentioned will show up in bigger numbers through the air once you get where you want to be. I think so. And and um, again, we want yards and we want points, and we'll take them any way that we can get them. But I just know that the balance um, in an offense like ours is going to be critical as we move forward. All right, uh, from at Ryben3, and then we'll wrap things up with you. Is there a plan for a freshman like Dax Milner or other true freshmen to only see the field in four games so that they can maintain a redshirt with the new rule? That's one of those things that we would leave open-ended, um, and, and each week we're making decisions based on who's practicing the best. And so if there's a freshman who's not quite um, ready, then we certainly keep that in mind with not playing him or playing him in a limited number of games knowing that we could um, make that decision later. All right, finally for you, Coach. Uh, Washington, among the tops nationally right now in scoring defense, pass efficiency defense, don't allow a large number of yards per play, top 10 there. A quick thought about the Huskies as you've seen them early in this week now. Um, big, physical up front, fast and sound in the back end, very, very well-coached unit. Um, don't put themselves in, in bad position very often and don't have to overcommit themselves to stop the run. Able to do that with with their front with a lot of big guys in the defensive line and at linebacker. And so it'll be another big challenge for us. Well, I hope your first coaching visit to Husky Stadium is a good one here this Saturday. Thanks for coming in. All right. Thanks. See you in Cooks. a couple of weeks. All right. That is Coach Jeff Grimes. Coming up after the break, I'll be joined by BYU Special Teams Coordinator, Linebackers Coach, and Assistant Head Coach Ed Lamb as we continue on the Coordinator's Corner, brought to you by JCW's The Burger Boys on BYU TV and BYU Radio. I would like to congratulate the men's basketball team on their big win this weekend. I know that one of them is here. I want you to stand up. Hey, stand up. It's not me. I'm not on the team. Then how do you explain this? I bought it? He's on the team. Come on, Jake. There's no need to be humble. I'm, I'm not on the team. No midterm if he makes this shot, if he misses extra homework. Jake, 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 Jake. Gear so legit, they'll think you're on the team. BYU Store.
Viewers can get involved by going to randomaxtv.com and nominating either people who need help in their lives or people who are a force of good in their community and just need a step up or something like that or the recognition that they are a good person. Sometimes you, that's all you really need is that recognition that you're a good person. You're a good person. Sorry, I just wanted to give you that recognition. Don't miss Random Acts tomorrow at 7 Mountain on BYU TV. Yo, man, I'm about to get Kurt Cranford here. I thought you said it was like a masterpiece. The scorpion stung me. It's like a masterpiece in the sense that it's not one. The poison. You're already dying. Oh, yeah. <sighs> Two for one sound bar, baby. Woo! Ah! Sir, I don't think this is going to work. Writers have to have a thick skin. Yes, I see you wrote that on page 20. Maybe try less bad cop, more good cop. Don't miss Studio C tonight at 7 Mountain on BYU TV. Tomorrow on BYU Football with Kalani Sitake, the coach recaps the McNeese game, previews the matchup with Washington, and answers your questions using the hashtag Sitake Show. Watch BYU Football with Kalani Sitake tomorrow at 8 Eastern on BYU TV. Bruh, I got no chill. The BYU TV Sports Post Game. BYU in Washington. Saturday after the game on BYU TV. Bailey'sAlly.com. Dinner after the game at JCW's includes something for everybody, from burgers to wings, shakes to salads. JCW's quality and a lot of it in Lehigh, American Fork, Provo, South Jordan, and coming soon to Harriman. We're into our second half hour on the coordinator's corner as we shift gears from offense to special teams with coordinator, linebackers coach, and assistant head coach Ed Lamb. Your questions for Coach Lamb can be submitted on Twitter using hashtag CCBYU or via comments on the BYU Football Facebook Live broadcast of our show. Coach Lamb, congrats on the weekend win. 30 to 3 over McNeese. Thank you. Yeah. Defensively, very solid. Uh, opportunistic on offense, I think we could say, and then the big plays made on special teams. So it really was kind of comprehensive in terms of how the victory came together in all those three phases, kind of helping one another out. It, it has been, um, I think, in, in all three of our wins, that's been a common theme. Is, uh, uh, each group, there's a lot of room for improvement. We can get better, and uh, certainly that's our job to keep striving to do that. But the, the teams have worked well together. You're coming off a historical high point in the win at Wisconsin right into an FCS opponent. How do you think the team responded to that kind of unique dynamic from a really high high against a very tough FBS team to coming home against FCS? I think when uh, in, any time you play uh, level down, the concentration is uh, the big part. I think guys, you know, guys get up for practice as far as effort, but um, you know, it's. I think any athlete will tell you that bringing the same motivation every game, game after game, is difficult to do. There's different reasons to be excited. Every fan talks about bulletin board material, locker room material, who doubts us, playing with the chip on a shoulder, and if you do that every week, then what's the point of, of even talking about that and recognizing that it's a reality? And so to me, it's about concentration and effort throughout the week and in the game, and I thought our guys concentrated and played with a lot, a lot of effort. I, I wish at times we'd have had a little more uh, motivation and heart and, and played with more emotion. But uh, the concentration as a, and effort was there, and that overall led to, a, to a solid win, at least. At their level, McNeese came in ranked ninth and 10th in their division. You've faced that program historically. In the FCS, it's a name program. They win a lot of championships, go to the playoffs very regularly. Uh, how do you like from a, rather, what kind of game do you think they gave you from what they could do? Oh, I think they played really solid. I think uh, we, we had a few breaks. Had the, a few breaks gone their way, that would have been a very close game in the fourth quarter. You know, and, and just, I mean, I know you study these things, but uh, you take a look at the top 10 perennial FCS football teams or even the top 10 right now and what their um, showings against FBS opponents have been, and you can go back a long way, and it's always a very competitive game, and they win they win a lot of them, and, and not just against uh, your group of five opponents. They, beat, they knock off power five opponents regularly. They have eight all-time wins against FBSs, and, and again, the farther it goes along, I think you have to appreciate the fact that BYU does not uh, does not drop off in terms of, of their performance. They're 13-0 now. BYU's 13-0 all-time against FCSs. And so you're expected to win those. But as I mentioned, although ODU's not FCS, uh, you can take a favored, a highly favored FBS team, and on the wrong week, they're, they're not going to get the result they want. Virginia Tech showed us that on the weekend. That's right. It's, it's very difficult, and that's why the challenge is really to show up and concentrate and give great effort and play with the motivation that's available and, and try to spark motivation and emotion in each other.
Let's hit one of your position groups, uh, linebacker. Already your depth has been tested there. Uh, no Butch Pau for a second straight week. And Zane Anderson was kind of an under-the-radar scratch before the McNeese game. So you're missing two of three of your starting linebackers, and yet the next man up has to perform at a certain level for you and the team. And how do you think that was accomplished? Well, I, I think that, uh, again, like kind of my overall assessment of the team and the special teams in general, linebackers would be the same same way. And uh, we've got to um, continue to develop and get better at every position. You know, I think, um, you know, we, you have to be, I think, pretty um, uh, sorry in your depth for injured guys to still stay on the top of the depth chart. And that's the, that's been the case with Zane and, and now Butch now for two straight weeks is just, you know, working through some injuries, nothing season ending, but certainly something where the next guy up is taking the majority of practice repetitions. And, uh, and then in the game, those guys deserve the first opportunity to go in. And it's always the best player and coaches, myself included, we don't always make the right choice, but it's our job to, to figure out who's uh, who's the best for that moment and also what's the best for the, the team and for the injured player going forward because it's not just about the game, it's about the games and the season. Pre-game, uh, Kalani told me that uh, Bush would be available. Whether he would play or not would be a question. He was dressed for pre-game but didn't get in the game, as I recall, and, of course, Zane wasn't dressed. Uh, would either or both those guys be pacing to get in the game uh, in Seattle on the weekend? Uh, they were they were this past game, yeah. You know, Zane Zane wanted to dress and play, and uh, and Butch did dress and was available to play and wanted to play, and those guys, you know, we I think we've built a, a level of trust where they, you know, we trust them, and and they they there's a certain amount of uh, kind of pleading and and <laughs> say, hey, coach, I'm ready. You know, you call on my number, I'm ready, and and I respect that and want that, and then you know, we I think we've built up enough trust with them that when we say. Uh, this is how we're going to go, at least for this snap or this minute or this drive, then, then I, think, I think there's a mutual respect there. Okay. Uh, Rhett Sandlin uh, had an INT on the weekend. Adam Pulsifer had a pass breakup. And then you go to replacement DBs, Tanner Jacobson uh, with a big pick, uh, Sawyer Powell with a fumble recovery. So, again, uh, the depth is there for guys to make plays on this team. That's right. Absolutely. And, uh, and that's something that uh, – you know, it's it's important that when those backups get in there, that they that they show that they're in there for a reason. And um, and depth charts change so over the course of time. Coaches change their minds over the course of time, and and things like that can spark some of those conversations. One of the things that Kalani talked about with his post game was uh, he wants to get uh, better starts from his team overall. Slower start again, uh, a zero point first quarter for BYU, and that hasn't been necessarily the hallmark uh, in the last couple of years. Is getting off to these uh, you know spectacular starts. Yet BYU, when they have a first First quarter leads really good for it, good front runners. How do you see either the starts of games or the moving into a game tendency for BYU, and does that need improvement? <laughs> That's a good question, yeah. <laughs> uh, the way I see it is, is you don't want to become over-focused on that. You want to focus on execution. Uh, there's no way for a player to get his mind around a comment such as, we need to start faster. What, what does that mean for a player? I mean, you still have to make the block and the alignment and the stance so that you put your eyes in the right place. And so really, you know, Coach is pointing out the right thing, and, and we all want to be aware that fast starts help win games and get you off to the right start. But it's all about executing the play as if it were the third quarter on the first play of the game. Whether it's first series, seventh series, or 11th series, you hope the guys have an equivalent effort every time. Yeah, ab- absolutely, yeah. All right, break time on the coordinator's corner. When we return, special teams coordinator Ed Lamb on the Cougar Kickers. And a look ahead to Saturday in Seattle. We're back with that after this. AAA agents like Leticia are popping up where people are having doubts about insurance. Like when it comes time to buy a car. So how can I help you today? What if I decide to become a rideshare driver? If you want to outsmart insurance doubt, visit a AAA branch. Call it a path. Or way through. It can be arrow straight or have twists and turns. It's life's financial journey, and Mountain America Credit Union is here to guide you every step of the way. With timely advice and affordable products, this is your journey. Let's begin together. We're Mountain America, guiding you forward. AAA agents like Octavia are popping up where people are having doubts about insurance. Like here, where Makai is learning to drive. What brings you in today? When I get my car, can my friends drive it as well? If you want to outsmart insurance doubt, visit a AAA branch. Hi there, how are you? My name's Todd. Nice to meet you. Can we put you on our TV show for a second? If 
any lesson can be learned from the story track. I felt misunderstood. I felt like there was no one in the world who was going through that thing. I hope people will understand that they're special. I'm a believer. They're important. I'm a believer. I got right there saving my life. They have a compelling story. They are worth getting to know. Watch the story track tomorrow at 8 Mountain on BYU TV. Some say if you're looking for the soul of America, you'll find it right here in Memphis, Tennessee. But if Memphis is the soul of America, then what's the soul of Memphis? From the banks of the Mississippi to the neon lights of Beale Street, that soul's hiding somewhere, and I've got to put it all in one painting. Join me as we paint the town of Memphis, Tennessee. Don't miss Painting the Town tomorrow at 830 Mountain on BYU TV. The Coordinator's Corner brought to you by JCW's The Burger Boys, BYU Special Teams Coordinator, Linebackers Coach, and Assistant Head Coach Ed Lamb with me till the top of the hour. 20th ranked BYU at 11th ranked Washington Saturday. Cougars look into a knockoff a ranked team on the road for a second time in three weeks. BYU defense has now kept nine consecutive opponents under 24 points since 1974-75. When BYU had a 14-game run of those sub-24s, the only longer run of sub-24 defensive efforts came during a 12-game stretch in 2012 and 2013. So we're talking about some some historical numbers here, uh, Coach Lamb, in, in terms of keeping numbers where you like them, and that's one of those uh, benchmark numbers that has historically kind of stood the test of time. It has, yeah, and I, I credit... Uh... I credit the offense too, you know, for not turning the ball over. But points in college football and those numbers you just you just cited, um, you know, you're you're counting points against the team, and so special teams and offense play a big role in that too. It's always kind of you, you kind of uh, have to take it with a grain of salt. Sometimes you look at your defensive uh, uh, points allowed numbers, and seven of them or or 14 of them came off the board against your own offense or <laughs> your special teams. And our offense has been really good. Our turnover margin right now is in the plus. That's always a positive. And special teams coverage has been solid. So uh, knock on wood, we haven't had to deal with any of that yet. And the defensive boys are playing really hard. BYU's defense is top 25 in scoring right now. 17 points a game allowed. Uh, yards per play is top 50. Under five yards a play allowed. And takeaways is a top 25 as well. You have eight takeaways, and you mentioned the margin a moment ago. And one of the most stark differences from last year to this is in turnover margin. BYU last year was 118th in the margin, and right now you're tied for 12th. Yep, and that's you and I have talked about this before. But when we talk about sacks and turnovers, um, you know, those come over the over a long period of time. You're talking about those those come when you're winning. And uh, the other team stretches. They need first downs on third down, and so they get into drop back pass turnovers and um, and and uh, sacks, plays disruptive plays on the ball. Those always come, you know, when when the other team's stretching a little bit. And so we've we've been we've had the lead in at uh, for long stretches uh, over the last uh, four games, and it's really helped out our defense. We've talked uh, off the air about this, I think, too. But even even the PI calls BYU's had defensively uh, are somewhat a reflection of what you just said. Uh, teams having to stretch or not needing to stretch to win That's games. Right. That's right. Yeah, all those things, all those things to start to occur. You know, if, uh, when it when a uh, it, well, you call it four minute, but uh, when an offense doesn't need to stretch, in other words, when an offense goes on the field and feels like, okay, we want to score, we want to get first downs, but if we don't and punt and have good field position, then we're still winning this game and we're comfortable. Guess what? The drop back passes go way down. It's all quick game, it's all run game, and it's really hard to create turnovers and wreak havoc and create sacks when, when you're not facing drop back pass. Okay, to some special team stuff right now then. BYU is currently 16th in net punt, but in terms of punt efficiency, it's near 90% right now, 88.9% where the national average is in the 60s. Retton Allman himself personally is 19th in punt average, and again, punt average isn't necessarily the be-all, end-all. You're not always going for distance, but net is important, and you're, and you're high there. Then Skyler Southam has made all 16 of his scoring kicks inside 50, okay? So that's 11 for 11 on PATs and 5 for 5 on field goals inside the 50 as one miss was on 52. So through four games, I don't know there's a lot to be uh, too unhappy about with your kickers. Uh, you know, I've been a big uh, you know supporter of Rhett, even through his tough times as, as a place kicker. We'd have some up and downs, and especially with his longer field goal attempts uh, over the last couple of seasons. But um, he's he's a professional, and Skyler's a professional. They They spend... All day, every day, perfecting their their craft. You know, they have they have other things in life, um, school and family and 
and uh, spiritual life, et cetera. But when they show up to football, they are out there working on their craft, and uh, they approach the game in a business-like manner. All of our specialists right now are doing that and feeding off of it, and it's it's been really good. Longest field goal in eight seasons, by the way, for BYU, the 47-yarder oh, by Skyler. Nice. Oh, Mitch great. Payne in 2010, I think at 48, was the long, the last longer field goal. So let's not just look past the fact that he's gone 45-47 here in back-to-back weeks on scoring kicks. Uh, it's now a weapon for you. It, it is, yeah. And, and those are coming off grass. So turf's, uh, turf's even adds a couple of more yards uh, to a field goal kicker. Um, and so you're really pleased with the, the way he's been delivering really he's been he's done a fantastic job and you got to give credit to the protection and the snapper and the holder as well we didn't get a chance to talk about uh, gavin fowler's hold in the wisconsin game with you because you were off last week on this program but that was as big a play as was made in madison it, it is yeah and i and i think i've said it and maybe people have heard it but i i approached him after the game and said hey a, a long time from now people sp- still be talking about this win and and i wouldn't have believed that when i was a player but i've seen it now people still talk about our victories over kansas state texas a&m back when i was a player in the 90s and but uh, and I don't know if they'll remember that picking him him picking the ball up off the ground, but it was as big a play as as any in the game. So perfect kicking day uh, for Skyler, and I mentioned the punt game a moment ago how well it's been, and then uh, it's a blocked field goal uh, with a return that sets up a touchdown in that big second quarter on Saturday, and then it was a nice punt return from Mike Shelton uh, at to set up another touchdown, and so uh, whether it's uh, whether it's a block or a return or the kicking game itself, special teams was very noticeable against McNeese. It, it was the guys worked really hard. We dodged a couple of bullets. Uh, we had a. Uh, one of our punt coverages just just wasn't coordinated, and uh, they ended up getting uh, what, what one of the longer returns in the in the three years that I've been here. I think it was a 12 yard return, and and maybe that's the second longest return. I think we had another one of 17 or so last year. But uh, at, at any rate, we we need to clean up that part of the coverage. Mike Shelton has done a great job of making people miss. Our punt return guys have worked incredibly hard to get that phase of our game going. We've only had one kickoff return on the season, and that's more about the the kickers that we've faced. I look at the national stats. There's teams that have returned almost 20 kicks already, 15 or 20 kicks. So we just at, at some point we'll face a string of kickers that give us more of a chance to get that kickoff return game going. But so far, really pleased about the effort of our punt return guys. There was a punt muff. Uh, recovered by the opposition, waved off by a penalty. Yeah. But I think on the very next chance he got, that's when he had the big return, isn't yeah, it? Such, yeah, such a huge play by Riggs Powell. He uh, he was rushing that punt hard, bringing a lot of pressure, and, and he, he would have had a chance to block it, and they, they held him. And, and so he drew that penalty, and mm-hmm. we give points for that in our production chart. So Riggs Powell drew the penalty, which negated the muff uh, that, mm-hmm. that Mike had. Their punter was doing a pretty good job of putting it right in the line of the sun in the shadow, and that ball was kind of going in and out of vision. And, uh, put, yeah, put Mike in a tough situation on two of their punts but then they made amends immediately he did with the big return setting up a touchdown which kind of leads me to that second quarter with the 24 points Uh, that's a satake era high for any single quarter so blocked field goal results in a touchdown interception results in a touchdown Uh, the shelton punt return ends up in a touchdown Uh, there was a fumble recovery that resulted in a field goal for byu and those were all the four scores in the uh, in the second quarter so either sudden change takeaways or big special teams plays i give so much credit to the makeup of our team and our offense and our offensive coaches i i can't tell you how many times i see teams and even have been on teams where when the offense goes out in good field position or after a turnover there's almost a there's a, a noticeable drop in their effectiveness almost as if like they're you know, it's two different teams out there and the offense kind of regrets being put in such a good position and having the expectation to score hmm. Our offense this year has taken such advantage of field position. They go out and they just put the nail in the coffin, and that's how you win games, backing up series on offense, defense, and special teams over and over and over. It's one thing to have the advantage in starting field position, which BYU did. It's another thing to make it pay off for you, and BYU did end up plus seven in average starting field position, and and with even just a one-yard edge in the Satake era, uh, BYU's 14-5 and five with the positive number, and then when it gets to five yards or greater, as it was on Saturday, that number, as I mentioned with Coach Grimes, is at 11-3, and three. so it means a lot, but you have to make it mean a lot as well, and BYU certainly did on the weekend. All right, heading to break on the Coordinator's Corner. When we come back, your social media questions using hashtag CCBYU for Coach Ed Lamb as we continue live on BYU. BYU TV, BYU Radio, and ESPN 960 back right after this. In the timeline of life, you make choices every day, like buying your first car, what a beaut, or serving your mission. You come home and hop right into college. 
and then that magic day comes marriage getting married is incredible and pricey but you know what children are even pricier your family grows and you need that first home no matter where you are in the timeline of life deseret first credit union is right there with you dfcu your values your timeline your financial future I'm Dave McCann. Tomorrow on After Further Review, we review McNeese in preview Washington. Best hour, BYU football on television. Blaine Fallon, David Nixon, Brian Logan explain the game tomorrow night here on BYU TV. Tomorrow on BYU Football with Kalani Sitake, the coach recaps the McNeese game, previews the matchup with Washington, and answers your questions using the hashtag Sitake Show. Watch BYU Football with Kalani Sitake tomorrow at 8 Eastern on BYU TV. Get your entertainment fix on BYU TV. Tonight at 7 Mountain, it's all new sketches full of all new energy with the Studio Seacast. Relax with the family and unload the laughter. Then, Eric Dowdle is an amazing artist that adds true character to his paintings. Travel along as Eric discovers the heart of interesting places in painting the town. Watch your favorite BYU TV shows here and catch up anytime on BYUtv.org or the BYU TV app. Yo, man, I'm about to get Kurt Rambler here. I thought you said it was like a masterpiece. The scorpion stung me. It's like a masterpiece in the sense that it's not one. The poison. You're already dying. Oh, yeah. <sighs> Two for one sound bar, baby. Woo! Ah! Sir, I don't think this is going to work. Writers have to have a thick skin. Yes, I see you wrote that on page 20. Maybe try less bad cop, more good cop. Don't miss Studio C tonight at 7 Mountain on BYU TV. Dinner after the game at JCW's includes something for everybody, from burgers to wings, shakes to salads. JCW's quality and a lot of it in Lehigh, American Fork, Provo, South Jordan, and coming soon to Harriman, special teams coordinator, along with linebackers coach and assistant head coach Ed Lamb with us. BYU's five-game September comes to a close this Saturday at Husky Stadium. 20th-ranked BYU at a number 11, Washington. I presumed that Coach Grimes in his Arizona State days got up to Seattle, but he said that was during a season where they had the rotation off, and he didn't get, actually, to, to coach up at UW. But you have coached in that stadium before and played there with BYU. Uh, yeah, it's a, it's a great venue, great site. You see the boats come up on the harbor, and <laughs> and uh, some people kind of watch the game from out there, or at least used to. I noticed that they've removed the track and changed the stadium quite a bit, but it's always been one of the loudest stadiums in college football. If I'm not mistaken, I think they have the, the decibel record, and uh, the, those those big metal overhangs certainly don't hurt with that. Yeah, the cantilever design uh, enhances that. And uh, by the way, uh, there are only three teams in the West uh, with, a lot, with a greater per-game attendance right now than BYU. One of them is Washington. They had a sellout uh, this past weekend, I think, for the Arizona State game. All right, to uh, social media now for Coach Ed Lamb. At B Royal Blue Coog says, The past few games, uh, there have been several opportunities where a quick reaction uh, could have resulted in a clean, uncontested INT by a linebacker. Uh, do you work on interceptions, and is that a focus on making catches and getting takeaways in the linebacker group in particular? And a lot of times in real time, it may look easier than it is to make the play. Mm -hmm. How have you kind of seen those chances uh, from your viewpoint um it, the same yeah it's it's a good observation we uh, we want we call it completing the turnover just to, to put a language to it and uh, even even more than that completing the takeaway and so to put it in a defensive standpoint and we do work out uh, we do work on that there's uh you know there's a there's a couple of ways to do it uh, it doesn't always translate just to play play catch or do interception drills because each um, interception opportunity can come in a different coverage and so there's a little bit different technique to playing man coverage and and jumping a route than there is to playing zone coverage and jumping a route but uh and then there's then there's the balance. Uh, oftentimes, when you see a linebacker uh, get a hand on a football, it's an amazing reaction that uh, got him got him into the throwing lane. And then other times, it's uh, yeah, it's, a, it's something where I, I need to find a way to to coach them to actually complete the takeaway. Uh, speaking of the the linebackers and keeping with them for a second, uh, Sione Takitaki has been pretty much an every down guy for you, unless you want to take him out. Uh, Health wise, he's been good, and then impact wise, he's been very good, hasn't he? He has. He's been. He's so impactful on a game, and and not just when he makes a stat, but he's very disruptive in the way that he plays. He plays with great energy. He does it in practice as well. I have to pull him out of practice because he's sometimes a danger to our own guys. But uh, he's been incredibly durable. A testament to his his work ethic and the way he trains all year long, and and he plays so fast. Often, not always, but oftentimes injuries come because guys are uh, just just 
shutting it down a, a second too early on mm. a play and don't don't keep their body moving. He keeps his body moving through the echo of the echo of the whistle. The echo of the echo. Uh, <laughs> there, there, there's a long college season to play. We don't, don't want to look too far ahead, but uh, NFL scouts are regulars at BYU practices at all different points of the season. Is Sione somebody that, are you okay to say, if these if he's somebody they've looked at, and if they do, what do they like about him, and what do you think would make him a good player at the next level if it gets there? Oh, yeah, I, I think you know. I, I'm a big uh, proponent of, of not uh, not hiding the fact that guys uh, should have aspirations to, to play in the NFL, make themselves the very best players they can be for college, and that should lead to NFL opportunities for those who are capable. But, uh, yeah, he's he's a, definitely a, an NFL draft uh, a board guy. He's on the boards right now, and, and every team in the league is taking a really close look at him. He fits at a number of different positions. He's played a number of different positions just this year. He's lined up at middle linebacker, strong side linebacker, weak side linebacker. He's rushed the passer for us in years past and, and this year on blitzes. Um, he is uh, he's, he's very much a guy that, uh, that that the NFL is coming specifically to see. And we have other guys on the team as well. But since you asked about him, he's uh, he's a target. And where would he be at the next level, do you think, position wise? Um, I think it's about so because he's so versatile, I think it's it's uh, just the team that picks him up. You know, that's that's what it's, if it's a if it's a three four team, I see him as an inside linebacker. If it's a four three team, I see him as a, a middle linebacker. And uh, so I think he'll play a little more in the box than he does uh, for us. But um, if he if he wasn't in the top if he wasn't the top middle linebacker, he can still go play outside linebacker at the next level. Fred didn't play the middle here, yeah. but he's he's a good middle for the 49ers. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, and that's that's a yeah that's a testament to what he's able to do there in, in the middle and get off blocks and be slippery. And uh, yeah, he, in fact, when the scouts came around, that was always a question is, did we think that he could play at, at that position? And so you kind of get a feel for it. And, and we'll, really with Shonda there, uh, they see his overall utility. And I don't think they're really worried about where he'll fit because mm-hmm. they know he fits at multiple spots. You weren't his position coach, but Fred Warner uh, doing what he's done to step into where he's stepped into and immediately make an impact with a team like that and be a starter. How proud are you of what he's been able to do with himself oh I'm, I'm so proud you know when the scouts come around we kind of put our name behind these guys and and they ask for our record do you think he can play inside and i remember talking to the 49 ers scout and saying you know i I, do you remember Donnie Edwards was my question to him and, and uh, Fred reminds me so much of Donnie where huh. he's just I think he can just play the game a long time he knows when to get physical he knows when to be slippery and Donnie wasn't ever like the guy that maybe struck fear in the hearts of a running back up in the hole but he was such a solid tackler and such a productive player he could blitz he could cover he could play in the middle he could take on offensive linemen and and I see Fred like that he's just I'm so proud of the way he's playing right now. Okay, Washington look ahead here in our uh, final minute. Uh, Washington's career rushing leader is Miles Gaskin. He's their running back. Career pass efficiency leader is Jake Browning. He's their quarterback. And three straight wins uh, for that team. Uh, neither BYU nor Washington have allowed more than 23 points in any single game yet this season. I love the matchup. How do you see it? Oh, I see it like that. <laughs> it's yeah, the the matchup at, from a coaching standpoint because I'm I'm so involved with uh, defense and special teams and, and offense too. It's, I mean, every minute that's that uh, our team is out there, I'm into it and I'm into that matchup. So when our offense is out there, it's our offense against def- their defense and and you know it, it, so on down the line for whatever one of our units is out there. But I'm just excited. It's a proven team. It's a it's a veteran team that we're going against, and uh, it's just an opportunity to to show how much quality we have with our guys. We look forward to bringing the game to you out there in the Cougar Nation. Coach Lamb, we'll see you next week. Thanks, Greg. All right, that'll do it for the Coordinator's Corner. Next week, we visit with Coaches Lamb and Tuiaki as we review the Washington game and preview a conference weekend home game with Utah State, part of that three-game home game October. Thanks to producer Jason Shepard, Michael Miner, and everyone from BYU TV and from BYU Radio, Sean O'Neill, Terry South, Sean Fay, and the interns Sterling Richards and Lindsey Peterson, along with GM Don Shaline. I'm Greg Rubel. And for the coaches, this has been the Coordinator's Corner. We'll talk to you next week at 1 o'clock Eastern, 11 a.m. Mountain on BYU TV and BYU Radio. So long. Go Kooks. I ain't got no chill. The BYU TV Sports Countdown to Kickoff. BYU and Washington. Saturday, 7.30 Eastern, 5.30 Mountain on BYU TV. Katrina hit. We kind of knew, I think a day after, two days after, that our home was flooded. We evacuated and we were homeless uh, for about a year and a half. Bye.